All right, welcome to the video. Just came out from a ride, it's hot. I've got the ice cubes. Ice cubes dripping in the water here. This ice tube, ice cubes tooth for fat. Trying to let it dry out a bit here. Wow. Anyway, let's talk about, uh, oh, it's hot. It's a hot day, it's about 35 degrees Celsius here in Adelaide, South Australia. Date is, I think it's about November 14th, or halfway through November. So it's getting hot down here. Uh, question was about chain lube. Now, not sponsored by Squirt. All right, so this is totally unbiased financially. Um, I just do rate this product, you know. I'm a bit like, you know, autistic when it comes to recommending stuff I believe in. And this is, you know, hands down, nothing comes close to this. Nothing comes close to this. Anything that might come close would be waxing your chain. Waxing your chain. But this is still wax. It's a dry lube. Squirt, you've heard me ran, ran on about it for a long time. Um, I was watching the channel the other day. Oz Cycling. Oz Cycling. Stephen, he's down from Gulwa Victor Harbour Way, which is about 70k south where I'm at. So he's got a lot of tutorials on how to clean your chain, how to wax your chain. Some great things. Got an easy listen format. And um, he's been a rider for a long time as well. He, he goes to the wax. I go the squirt. Um, he did a video where he compared the molten speed wax, which is a popular wax. I think it's quite expensive for what it is. Um, and he said he got 4,000 k's out of the chain. And then he went to his homemade wax, which is using candles and stuff, correct me if I'm wrong. And he got about 12,000 k out of the chain before it got to that 0.5 wear measurement. With squirt, I'm going to say, some mosquito bought me. I'm going to say you're going to get very similar to a 12,000k at least out of chain. In my experience, it is just like unrivaled. But again, you've got to keep your chain clean. All right? And so I've done a lot of tutorials on how to clean the chain. And you want to clean your chain, your cassette and your chain rings just once. And then you never really have to do it again. Um, and then I, uh, you know, well, it's sort of funny. Like, I still clean my chain and cassette, but it's not like that day one where you got that factory grease which is better than nothing but the factory grease is designed so the chain can stay in storage for 20 years and never rust right? so generally it's best to get rid of that factory grease from day one before you even put it on your bike you know chuck your chain in some you know, methyl added spirits we use or mineral turpentine and i'd use it a little bit shake it up get a rag give it a good polish and it all just comes off and then let the solvent evaporate don't put, pour it down the sink you, know, you can pour it on cement, let it evaporate, but don't pour stuff down the sink. It's like, come on. So, what I love as well about these agents is that you're using minimal solvents. Right? This, I was riding to that Norton Summit, and I can see people's chains just black, black grinding paste. They're using Tri Flow or Finish Line or Rock and Roll. All these things that are great and better than nothing, but they're going to wear out your product real easy. And then you've got to use a lot of harsh old ones to clean your chain every every few days, you know. So, but this stuff here, it's like you, when you put your chain on your bike, it's just nothing on your hands, you know. There's no like chain ring marks when it touches you. Squirt. Right, this is this is it. This is the holy grail. I just came back from training then, and uh, for riding up Norton Summit, and I'm feeling pretty like you know, I just want to chill. I want to chill. I don't want to take my chain off, put it in a wax pot, be flicking switches, monitoring things, and. They have to break the wax off the chain and all that stuff. I mean, some people do that, and that's fine, but I've got a life um, outside of bike mechanics, and uh, whilst I have done the chain waxing stuff, and it was sort of cool, it's a lot of faff. It's a lot of faff. So this is this is the easy, easy waxing, you know, for all the benefits of waxing without the faff and stuff like that. So there you go. That's that's my uh, ultimate, this one here. Come home just then, hang the bike up in the tree, just backpedal it, put some squirt on, and it'll dry overnight, ready for tomorrow, you know? How easy is that? I'd have to have the chain off, put it in the cook cookery pot, and temperature, like all that, just, just boom, boom. So I'm not having to dig at any, anyone who waxes chains. I think the chain waxing um, cult, <laughs> the, chain, the chain waxing cult out there is fantastic in that it creates discussions about what is the best lubes for your chain you know it creates discussions about longevity and cleaning and environmental stuff and that's fantastic so i'm a huge fan of the chain waxing cult um it's fantastic because it's just creating discussion and when you create discussion and objective you know content and stuff like that you can you can level up so for me level up squirt it's pragmatic it's cheap you can travel with it we did morrison trail me and a couple of mates did morrison trail back in winter 
back in July, and um, it was a fantastic squirt. You know, he just boom, put it on at night time, go to sleep in the morning, ready to go. And now if I was doing chain waxing, I got to, you know, this is a little bit more far from now. So there you go, that's my tip. Squirt. Squirt. If you want to learn how to clean your chain, go check out Oz Cycling. He's got some great tutorials about it. I've got some tutorials as well. Depends on what format you like. Um, but yeah, this is the deal there. So let's do. Let's take some questions from the audience. Um, how many calories have I eaten today? So that's Juan Lopez. Juan Carlos Lopez. How many calories? Where are you from, Juan? Where are you from, Juan? Um, also, let us know where you, where you are from down below because there might be some people local to you. You know, be like, hey, you're from, you know, Tijuana, Mexico. Me, me too. Let's catch up for a ride. Blah blah blah. So always in the comment section. Let us know where you're from, and then create a little community, little mini community there. How many calories eaten today? Um, I would say I've probably done about 200 grams of sugar today. So that's what's 800 grams. Uh, so 800 calories there. And now I'm gonna smash in some more water. Got water here. I've got some more sugar in here. And then I'll probably have a little nap, full recovery, and then uh, smash in, go to the shops, get some more fruit, and well, so try and get three, four thousand calories a day, every day, that's what I try and do. And um, I'm a weekend warrior in that I don't really train much during the week, you know, I ride to the shops and stuff like that, but on the weekend, you know, it's game time up Norton summer, it's like get up. Yes, I didn't go out to, uh, in the morning, but today I woke up, got out the bike about seven o'clock, and just did laps up and down Norton's, just racing crew, and it's great, it's good, really good vibe. There's always someone to race up there, and uh, you never know who's gonna turn out, turn up. So yeah, that's the deal, and just, you know, drinking water, so you're always peeing clear every two or three hours. Yeah, my throat's a little bit raspy. You know, water's so important, man. It's so important to have enough water for your dental health, for your mental health. There we go. Ooh. Ah, that's good, the good stuff. So ice and water is really good for me for summertime. It just uh, helps you cool off a little, a little bit extra. Another thing as well, to see if you're hydrated, is watch the pros, like after the, the Tour de France stage or whatever, when they're doing interviews, you know, the, the guy or the girl's got the water bottle, and they're like, they'll just suck it down. The average person's dehydrated, got a red face. If your face is red, you're dehydrated. They'll have a sip of a bottle, And then, you know, they have to puff the cheeks because the, oth the esophagus is all, it's all constricted to help preserve moisture loss. And so then they can't really swallow, it hurts to swallow the... Notice that. Notice that with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, whoever, or your kids even, when they puff their cheeks at water, it means they're dehydrated, right? So just take it easy on them. Their mood could be really unstable. They could be like flipping out or a red face is a red flag that the person has some severe to mild dehydration and if it's a hot day they're also risking heat stroke so make sure just stop get some shade sit down and just get them to chug a whole bottle of water do that all right do that that's really important i mean i've, I've known people who have died from heat stroke from dehydration the kidneys stop filtering you die you know what i mean even a hard day of dehydration will affect your kidneys, damage your kidneys so much, they'll get permanent scarring and you have reduced renal function. That's fact, right? So never, ever get thirsty out there, people. Always have some water. Because if you get thirsty on a hot day, man, you're damaging your kidneys. Like literally, you know. Kidneys don't recover that well. You know, the, 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 the scarring and the scar tissue in the kidneys can accumulate over time. So I've lost, you know, two people I've known, two friends, to severe dehydration. Right? So it's a real deal. And I've seen plenty of people have massive crashes because they got dehydrated or have really bad mood swings and just bring the vibe down and not enjoy their moment, you know, because they're just dehydrated and their body's just like, oh, I don't like this, you know. It's like, it's like if someone's like choking you, you know, and you can't enjoy the moment because you can't breathe. Or if you've got asthma or whatever, you can't enjoy the moment because you're like, you got pain there. Right? So hydration is so important. Um, so Nick, Nick Humphrey says I've been, I've been squirting since last summer. Yeah, squirt. Squirt is where it's at. Mexico. Juan is from Mexico. Hi from Chile. We have someone from Chile as well. Los Angeles, Ireland. Got, yo, anyone from Germany? This is a Deutschland. We've got Washington. Here, that's in Germany. Dayton. Where's Dayton? Dayton. Daytona? Where's Dayton? Where's Dayton? 
Um, Juan says, do you measure your heart rate? I don't, Juan. I used to. I used to be, you know, I first got a heart rate monitor uh, 20, over 20 years ago. Back in 1999, I got a little Polar Cross Trainer XT, and I was like 400 bucks. And uh, I did a sleep deprivation study to, to afford that watch. And I, I was religious with heart rate. Religious with heart rate. But I don't use heart rate at all anymore. And the reason that is, is it's just so many variables. There's so many variables to heart rate. So you could be doing, say, 200 watts or 300 watts, you know, or whatever your, you know, whatever your sort of zone is when you're going hard, your time trial pace. And your heart rate, so for me it would be like, say, 350 watts, all right? That's when I'm going really good. And my heart rate might be 160 if I'm really fit. And if I'm not so fit, it might be like 180, you know? And if my testosterone's high, it might be even like 185, all right? So I found that testosterone levels directly affect heart rate, caffeine levels affect heart rate, hydration, music, who you're riding with, if there's, if there's like, you know, if there's energy in the, in the bunch there. So, yeah, it's, you know, heart rate is so variable. It's not worth measuring, okay? It's not worth measuring. Power is what matters, all right? What was your average power for the climb? What was your average power in the sprint? Um, and if you're a runner, you want to go by pace. Right? Now, that can be hard if you're going uphill, you know, because it's hard to pace an uphill. Then you got to go by feel, perceived effort. And so, hear that thunder. So heart rate, it just, no. Because it's, just, it's bad to use heart rate because, let's say you're doing a race. Let's say you're doing a 10K running race. And you're like, okay, my average heart rate should be 170. And in the race, you can only get up to 160. You know? Or in the race, you could handle 180. But you hold it back because you're like, oh, 180 is too high. I've got to bring it out to 170. But you could have held 180, you know? Because you're hyped up, maybe a bit of caffeine or your testosterone's really high that morning. And so your heart rate can go higher. Right? Does that make sense? Like, if you use heart rate to pace off, it's really bad. What you can do is, if you want to collect data, is use heart rate, you know, for afterwards. Just say, oh, today was higher. Okay, yesterday was lower. It yeah. doesn't mean much, man. doesn't mean much. I remember one time, um, I had a shot of testosterone before 5K, a 250 milligram shot of enanthate. I was sitting like 195, you know, 195 in the last K. I was like, well, what's going on here? And my watch, my, heart, my strap wasn't bung or anything. Yeah? And I'll replicate that again. Did another shot in another race. Uh, so if your testosterone is really high, your heart rate can go really high up. So it's, it's just not accurate, man. Not accurate. Dayton, Ohio. Hi from Netherlands. <clears throat> oh, it's dry, isn't it? My throat. What do you think about the new Campy Eckhart group set? Eh, you know, I, it's all right, you know. If you've got it and you like it, that's what matters. I just think that there's great groups that's already out there. Shram Red 22, you know. Um, Shram Red 22, Shram Red 10 Speed. That's fantastic stuff. Shram Force 22, I'm a big fan of that stuff. So Shimano, the Dura ASO Tegwiz, that's good as well. So make sure you check the crank regulars so they don't fail on you. Um, we've got a question here. I stopped caffeine for two weeks, but I still feel crap. What's your advice? Um, what does feeling crap mean? You know what I mean? What does feeling crap mean? I would say, up the water. You know, it's uh, it's hard to know for me to give you a direct answer because I don't know you. You know, but let's say I, let's let's ask some questions here. How much water do you drink a day? in that do you drink enough water every day so you're pissing clear every two hours right so urine should be like clear clear like that you know if if your urine isn't clear you can never feel your best it's just it's not how it works just like saying because you'll be limited your hydration will be limited if you lose two percent of your body weight from dehydration just two percent your mental faculties pff, out the door you know two percent so hydration is so important, man. Um, so I would say, I'd also say, say how much grams of carbs are you eating a day? You know, how much, how many grams of carbs a day are you eating? I would say at least 10 grams of carbs per kilo body weight per day. So for me, I'm about, I don't know, 70, 80 kilos. It's about 700, 800 grams a day. Less than that, you got to have less libido, which can be good for some people, because they can focus on other things better. Um, less recovery. If you don't have sufficient glycogen every day. Your recovery is gone. Your motivation starts to drop, and you go, you start to rely on stimulants and stuff to get going. 
And so you maybe maybe you've dug yourself in a bit of a hole, uh, endocrine wise. You know, maybe your T's low. Maybe your, you know, well, who knows? Get some tests and then go from there. Right? Maybe your cortisol is just like tanked because you just been smashing stimulants when you're tired or so for so long. So either way, tip of the hat for wanting to get off caffeine. Right? I don't I don't recommend using no caffeine or no no drugs or whatever. I'm all about you know respecting them if you're going to use them and it's good to have times where you don't use them at all natasha what's up you need you want, give me the muddy shoes you want sock shoes yeah where are you off to washing get your helmet on yeah i'm going to get some soy milk for my banana smoothie all right here we go bananas do you want, do you want a shoe change just here natasha. hey um this one too oh yeah this one too here we go do a footsies under the table <laughs> Alright. Alright. What's this rain doing? I thought you said it wasn't going to rain much. No, it's not. It's just one more little patch. Here we go. Patching them. Tropical. Adelaide Tropical. So that's that's my deal there. Is um, you know, do a few tests, up your carbs, up your water, write things down as well. Measure measure how much grams of carbs you're eating. Give you get rid of your oil. Get rid of your oil for a couple of weeks. Mental clarity going to go up. Alright, we've got a question here from Nick. Nick Humphrey, your opinion, I'm on the verge of getting some Gamma power meter pedals, any good? Want to get a power meter on a budget? Boom, stages, bro. Stages. Sponsored, not sponsored. No, seriously, stages, man. Like, why would you get anything else? You know, like, I'm just like, you got lightweight. I am like OCD about dead weight on the bike. I'm like, if I can get something, you know, for 200 grams, why would I go something for 250 or 300 grams? does the same job you know what I mean? like why stages man stages power that's all i can afford anything i've used it all srm cork power tap blah 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 blah. stages stages lightweight proven good enough for chris room good enough for team sky good enough for all of us kmc chains what do you prefer uh, i like any i'll use any chain i'll use them all shram shimano kmc <coughs> YBN YBN chain feels pretty good as well but end of the day chain to chain sort of squirt lube that's what matters most and having a straight derailleur hanger that's what matters for your gear shifting lubed cables you know true and drive chain that's what matters I've got a piss hold on good I heard that I made the same factory as Shimano had three sets of Ultegra all cracked out of plates uh, what is that in that relation to pedal and KMC yeah, I think that's interesting. You've cracked three sets out of plates of chains. Wow, too many watts, mate. Too many watts. Too much carbs, bro. Um. All right. So Durian says he drinks lots of water. He's pissing clear. He's tired. Pain in the head. Hmm. Um. Maybe have a little bit of caffeine and see if that goes away. Yeah. And if it goes away then you know it's just caffeine detox and it's still there you know maybe you've got some tight neck muscles as well you know just give a bit of massage give them those massage guns and just you know just hang out stretch you want to stretch yourself out you know so tight neck muscles if you're carrying a backpack when you're riding things like that there's a lot of variables there so yeah i would say um just what i love as well about you know experimenting with no drugs you know or even experimenting with drugs is that you start to have that mindset of like ah uh, you know like you start to just instead of just guzzling down a caffeine drink or whatever, you like how many milligrams is this, blah blah blah, and just you know, you start to educate yourself. And it's not about being a hypochondriac, but it's about having more awareness, you know. More awareness, you know. And that, then that's great and you become more of a critical thinker. So that's why I recommend it what I, I have an issue with stimulants is people just chugging down stimulants, not thinking, they're just like Dang, nah, nah. it's like pause <sighs> breathe. You know, look around, reset, focus, and go, mm, you know, what's going on here? Observe, observe. So that's, that's what I love about. Juan, you are the best doctor. Um, I was disappointed by a lot of doctors in my life, seeing doctors looking for answers, and they had no idea, and I'm just like, wow. You know what I mean? You went to university, and you got no idea about hydration, no idea about what causes insulin resistance. You know, wow. You know, so I was, I was just a bit... Um, unsatisfied so i'm like well if i want to get something done do it yourself you know, do it yourself so i started learning more about stuff and real world stuff versus just distracting stuff 
Is there drugs in pro cycling? Um, no. There's no drugs in any sport anymore. No. Every, everybody decided last year, they're like, oh, everyone's going natty. We're all going natty. Cycling, swimming, tennis, UFC, UFC, rugby, you know, everyone's going natty. Bodybuilding, you, everyone's, everyone's natty now. Everyone's natty. Everyone just decided, guys, girls, let's go natty. Let's go natty. See, there's no drugs in pro cycling. There's no drugs in any sport. There's not even, you can't even get drugs anymore. You can't even get steroids and EPO and cortisone and modafinil. You can't even get these things anymore. They're all just gone. No one's using them. No one's buying them anymore. There's no money in winning. There's no money in winning. There's no money in domination. There's no money in doing steroids and building a crazy physique that looks so weird. And people are like, wow, what's that? That's cool. There's no money in that at all. There's no money in that at all. Long endurance or shorter high intensity rides, which is best for weight loss? Doesn't matter. Teresa. Teresa, I would say, Teresa, do both. Once a month, do that long ride, the 100K or the 200K ride, you know? Once a month, that, it's really good for your endurance, really good for your metabolism. And every week, I'd recommend the short high intensity climbs, you know? Between five minute TT and half an hour TT once a week. And if you combine those things once a month, you do that long ride, five hours, eight hours, whatever you're used to or not used to. And then once a week, you do that TT. And then the rest of the time, you're just cruising around commuting. You're going to have some incredible fitness, like incredible fitness results, incredible aesthetic results. You know, you do those things. That's what I recommend. The monthly long ride and then the weekly TT. Right? We just let it all out. You just get your ego and you drag it behind you and you just let it suffer and kick and scream as you're just dragging up the hill, just smashing it as hard as you can for five minute or 30 minute, you know? Cadence of about 90. Open mouth, just going for it. Good warm up, like a 10 minute, 20 minute warm up, you know? And then, uh, just, then you hit your climb, go for it. Pay attention on the road. And that, that that's that's the magic ride there. That is the training template. Long ride once a month, weekly TT. That's just what works. That's just what works. Um, how do I make friends in cycling? I've recently started cycling around in the hills, but I find a lot of cyclists I talk to are stuck up and very clicky. Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony, where are you from? Maybe there's someone local to you in this comment section. So people, please let us know where you're from in the comment section. There's no trolls here. Right? There's no trolls here. This is all legit crew. Trolls don't last very long on my channel. But they get the... They get the... Right? So there's no trolls here. So let us know where you're from. And maybe someone can message you or whatever, and, and, you know, you never know who's around. How do you make friends with cycling, man? Like, just be out there, you know? Be out there. And um, it's great that people don't say hello to you, because it just shows you instantly what they're about. That's good. You don't waste any time with any clicky stiff necks. Now, understand a lot of people don't say good day back there. They've got, they've got depression. You know, they've got mental health issues. So don't, don't take it personally. These people are in pain. They're suffering. They're just like, uh, right? Haters are suffering, snobs, they're suffering with mental health. Right? So they're probably not the people you want to be hanging out with anyway, because they'll probably just drag you down. So that's okay, you know, people don't have to say hey. Um, how often would you lube the chain with squirt? Would you recommend it for wet weather? Yeah, I, I recommend squirt for every weather. I apply every, after every ride. I, you know, let's say I do an hour ride, I'll generally apply it, you know, when I come home, you know. But this bottle, it lasts a long time. Just I just do a couple of rotations of the crank, Boom, it's good to go. Right? It's good to go. And then when if, if it ever dries up, just put a little bit of water in there and give it a good shake. Give it a good shake. Right? If it ever dries up, gums up, put water in there. It's water soluble. It's good. Just don't put it on your salad. Um, hey, Duran, what's up? Coming to you from Plano, Texas. Plano, Texas. Any advice for first budget road bike been riding Canada High with too many miles? And once something that's not 13 kilos? Great question, Michael. Um, so you're from Plano, Texas. I would recommend getting a specialized LA 105. All right, it's got a 105 group sit on there. It's got a Praxis crank, not too bad. But a specialized LA. They are an alloy rim brake bike that go good. All right, they're a nice whippy bike. So that's what I'd recommend. Stretch the budget, get a specialized LA Elite 105. And that bike will last you 10, 20 years. Okay, so that'd be a great one. Do you know do you sell drugs? <laughs> what do you want, mate? What do you want? Um, I used to do back in the day, you know. 
How can a beginner train by heart rate? Don't use heart rate. Use power. All right? Forget heart rate. Forget heart rate. Heart rate's like... Eh. Watch the start of this video. Watch the start of this video where we talked about heart rate. Don't use heart rate. Especially if you're a beginner. It's just like... Now, people disagree with me. But those people have never grabbed... Or they couldn't get a noob off the street and get him in world class for them, genetically, shape in a year. I can do that. I've done that. You know? Heart rate. No. Power. Yes. Get a stages power meter and forget the rest. Right? And train off power. And then you, by using power, you can pace off that. You want to do a two-hour ride? Keep it under 100 watts. Right? You want to PR on your local climb? Find out how many watts you can hold for, was it five minutes or ten minutes? And then do a little test. How many, watt, how many watts can you do for five minutes, ten minutes, 15 minutes? And then next time you hit the climb, you start at those watts. Let's say you average 200 watts for 10 minutes. And you've got a 10-minute climb coming up. Then you start the climb at 200 watts. You start at 300 watts. And then... Burn out, burn all your, get all your hydrogen ions in your blood, stinging your legs up, cramping your legs up. You hit the climb at 200 watts, and then you finish at 200 watts. You hold it the whole time, you know. So that's how you use a power meter. It's a pacing tool. Heart rate, pff, don't use heart rate. Heart rate will just confuse you. There's too many variables. It's like Bitcoin. It's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, it's like, well, how much is Bitcoin worth? When? You know, like, power is what you're doing. Heart rate's how you're responding. But even then, it doesn't even mean, mean much. So heart rate, don't use heart rate. Have you used mechanical disc brake? I do have mechanical disc brakes on my Pragma Crownbreaker, um, which we use for the Mawson Trail. They work great. They work great. Mechanical disc is great. Mechanical disc is lighter. Mechanical disc is much lighter than Hydro, in my experience. You've got some SRAM red levers. Um, you got some Spire TRP, Spire SLC calipers. That's a pretty lightweight setup. I ride SRAM NX for commuting. It goes good. Um, Tony, go to local cycling store. Did that and got to know loads. Yeah, that's good. Old, it's good. Going to go Eagle soon. Um, Asta, you know. How do I deal with Indian food that is have high calorie? Been difficult losing weight. Cut the oil, man. Cut the oil. Right? The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Simple as that. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. So a lot of Indian food. What's it got? Ghee. That's body fat from a cow going straight to your gut. All right? So if you want more gut, have more ghee. Another thing that Indian food has a lot of is cream and oil. What's that? There's fat. You got veggie fat or plant fat or animal fat. Either way, it's going on you. All right? So if you grab a big roll in your gut, it's either going to be animal fat or veggie fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. So all we have to do is just cut the oil out. Have oil-free dishes. Give them to make oil-free dishes. And they'll do that. No worries. Oil-free dishes, easy to cook. Um, tastes better. Tastes cleaner. Your skin doesn't get all greasy. You ever notice that after an oily meal, your skin gets all greasy and nose, and, you're, uh, and your back feels all clammy. Start getting zits. You know, just oil. Get rid of it. And you just, you'll shrink. You'll shrink. All right. It is better for me, and as much rice as you want, as much white rice, as much sugar as you want, as much fruit as you want, as much bread and pasta. Go for oil-free vegan options, and look at me. You know what I mean? Lean, lean. And I don't have to shoot my calories. I don't have to train like a madman. I can train when I want. If it's raining, I stay home and have sex, and just you know, it's the freedom of life. Freedom of life. Some people out there have to train every day because they're going to get fat otherwise because they eat so much fat. They're going to burn off all the fat they eat. It's like, oh, dude, just stop eating the fat. You don't have to train so much. <coughs> is it better for me to use 85% for my chain or change it at sooner to 50%? Um, who do I hope you're using squirt? All right. Hope you're using squirt. I hope you're keeping your chain clean. I hope you've got rid of that factory grease, the black grinding paste. When to replace your chain? I would say replace it at 0.5. Replace it at 0.5. And make sure you learn how to measure a chain where measure in a few spots on the bike. SRAM 22 or DA 9000. For me, it's going to be the SRAM. It's going to be the, it's just, it's just it's lighter. I would go SRAM shifters derailers and I would go Dura Ace cranks. Careful they don't fail on you with absolute black 4630 rings and Dura Ace brakes because they're just easier to set up than the SRAMs. Boom. 
Bugger Wugger, Harley. Do you think it's possible to get 10,000 miles out of... Yeah, man, for sure. For sure. Out of cheaper bottom brackets. For sure, man. Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, a good one, good thing to do if you want to get more longevity out of bottom bracket, take your cranks off every now and then, inspect them for any cracks, clean all the grit that gets caught in the bottom bracket, and put them back on. Yeah. Clean For sure you can do that. Um, Harley, would I need to eat more protein if I'm a weightlifter doing 80-10-10? No, you need more carbs. Pablo. Pablo Marrero. Um, Pablo, you need more carbs, bro. Right? Carbs. The muscle is made up of carbohydrate, right? So the more carbs you eat, the more your muscles can store the carbohydrate. So protein's not that important. Carbohydrates are. Carbohydrates give you strength. They help with testosterone production because your balls run on sugar. And they help with recovery and they fill your muscle up and they get you strong. So if you're stronger, you get bigger, you know, because you can lift more, all right? If you're stronger, you lift more, and you can keep getting stronger. And now you're going to get to a point where you get your natural ceiling and then you want to look at hormones. Um... So yeah, all the top dudes out there are using anabolic steroids. Now I'm not saying you should do that, I'm just saying that's the truth. And then you can decide what you want to do with that. All right? But never ever compare yourself to people using anabolics because uh, you know, they're always going to have an advantage. Let's say it's your twin brother and your twin brother's on juice and you're not. Your twin brother's going to smoke you in anything he does. All, right? all variables keep the same. All variables the same. So... Yeah, I don't. I don't know what your goal is, Pablo. I don't know what your goal is, but you need more carbs, enough carbs, for strength, recovery, sleeping. My wife just bought clippings today. She has never rode clippings. Any advice for her, Amiga? Amiga, get your wife, and get her to hold onto the tree, the fence, the wall, whatever, and clip in, 100 times each foot. Bang, 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 bang. 100, one, two, three, four, five, six, until she's confident with it. Right? That's how you do it. Otherwise, what you do? What most people do, go out on the road, haven't practiced it, go to unclip, fall over, break your collarbone. Fantastic. Surgery. How much that cost? Practice at home, 100 times each foot. You know, I've had many girls stay with me who have never used clippings before. And like, well, clippings are a huge advantage. Mountain bike shoes, huge advantage. You've got your muscles better, tone everything better, tighten everything up, um, or keep it tight. So you need to learn how to use it. So 100 times each foot. Right? They don't leave my house until they're fluid with it. Fluent. And that's generally 100 times each foot. So there you go, that's what you do. I recently, Mr. Tony, I recently did a ride in the Dandenong. So Tony's in the Dandenong. And if our car drivers come way too close, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's welcome to cycling. It's, it's better than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was hectic, man. So Tony, I would recommend wearing high-vis. Uh, when I find when I'm wearing high-vis kit, cars give me more room. Just, I'm not sure why, but that's how it is. Mike being fat is the American dream. Um, putting squirt on my chain right now. That's very good. Very good. I have, Mr. Tony from Melbourne, I have a creaking sound when I use my clipping mountain bike shoes and push the watts. Tony, what you want to do is pull your pedals out of your crank. Clean that. Clean your little, you got a little crank thing. A little hole in the crank, the thread. Clean that. Clean your pedal axle. And then put a bit of grease in your axle. Put a bit of grease in the thread. Put it back in, tighten it up, psh, your crank noise should go away. Right? And also you want to grab your crank at 6 o'clock or 12 o'clock position and see if there's any, hold onto your frame, see if there's any lateral play there. If there's any lateral play, maybe your bottom bracket's done. It's cooked or maybe your crank is loose. So to do those things, check for any play, no play, take off your pedals, grease, clean them, clean the, clean the uh, axle thread, clean it, clean it, the crank, axle thread. Put them in. That's a huge one, man. Carbon frame, Will's worth the weekend warrior. Um, no. Like, the benefits of a carbon frame, you know, if you're chasing every second, yeah, you can get a lighter frame, a lighter bike. Carbon wheels can be light. If, if you've got, the carbon can give you a 500 gram difference in weight. You know, like the lightest alloy wheels, probably 1,300 grams. You know, there's not much in it really. There's not much in it really. You don't need carbon. You know, I use carbon because I'm a poser, but uh, it's not essential. Right? It's not essential at all. Some of my fastest times, like Norton Summit, have been of alloy rims. So, yes, it's not. It doesn't make much difference. What matters 
is getting your bike around seven kilo, right? whether it's alloy or carbon. Around that seven kilo mark, low sevens, that's where you're gonna notice the difference, okay? So if, however you get there, carbon or alloy, low seven kilo, or even sub seven kilo. Uh, thoughts on flipping your stem to get low in the drops. If you can do that, if that's going to give you more power, do that, do that, do that. Make sure that your stem plug, if you're using a carbon steerer, make sure your stem plug goes deep enough below your lower stem bolt. All right? So you've got protection when you tighten up your stem bolts. Your plug wants to go below that. You don't want your plug to go like that, and then you crush down here. Your plug has to go down, so when you tighten the stem it's supported down here if, it's up, if, you're steer, if your plugs up here you crush it over time you know and then your steer snaps and you fail and you crash and you die you want to have all the way balls deep past that um past that lower stem bolt squirt with squirt my drive chain's noisier no that's not possible leo because squirt is life I would say, Leo, you probably, your derail is not adjusted properly. You know, it's not adjusted properly. <laughs> Dialing your drive chain there. Straighten your hanger. Do you still hate speed play pedals? Yes. Yes, I do. They're so hard to clip in. It's such a steep, this is like, oh my, what? What is this? What is this thing? I recommend Shimano SPDs. Um... Harley, do you still do two laws over food? Yes and no, you know. You can rice, sugar, fruit, two dollars a day you can do that. For sure. Many countries around the world. When I cycle when I rode UK end to end, lands and John O'Groats in nine days, that's good effort. I smashed the carbs like Harley said, boom. Nine days end to end, that's pretty good. That's very good. Now obviously you're gonna have different winds and stuff like that. Hopefully you get a tailwind. But yes, that's fantastic. Um, do you believe in Nike Alpha Fly for decrease? You want to you want to decrease your race time. You want to increase it. You want to get you want to go slower. You want to go fast. So decrease the race time. I would say um, Nike Vapor Fly next percent are better. Alpha Fly not good compared to the next percent Vapor Fly. Bike packing question here: Bivy bag or light tent? Weather above freezing? The bivy. Bivy, Bivy man. Um, I recommend a Bivy. You know, Bivy bag for sure. It's just lighter, easy to roll out. You can sleep more stealth. I'm a big fan of the Bivy tent. If you got a girl, you need to be entertaining. Otherwise, if you run a solo, Bivy bro, Bivy man. If you go Migtow, Red Pill, grab your Bivy. We've got Patrick Lino. Hey Harley, it's Patrick from Instagram, IG Patty Bumé. Thanks for the head shoot plug. Thank you very much. Go yeah, go check out Patty IG at Patty Boom A. Go check out his Instagram. He posts some pics there about his stem plug. So he's fantastic. I like, appreciate when people uh, acknowledge that tip. Um, when pedaling with clip-ins, Tony says, what position should my foot be in? You want to be whatever comes natural. I'm a heel down person. You know, Chris Froome's heel down. You know, Bradley Wiggins heel down. Tom Dumoulin, heel up. Peter Sagan, heel up. Um, Lance Armstrong, heel up. So it's personal preference, all right? Personal preference. So your heel wants to be whatever is going to come natty to you. I would say that um, also your heels, if, you're, if you stand relaxed and look down, if your heels are in, that's how you want to clip when we set up as well. So your heels are in when you pedal. All right? That's really important. I saw a girl today, she had a heel out. And it just it looked really out of balance. You know, so maybe what happens for you, her cleat slipped, now she pedals out like that. She's gonna have tight ITB and all sorts of issues potentially. So I didn't say anything to her because I I dropped her, I gave her the gas. But uh, if I see her again next time, I'll, I'll point it out. Say, hey, is, is your cleat slipped? Your heel's really sticking out. Um, thanks, Harley. Jose, Jose says, Jose, Jose. Thanks, Harley, for making, reminding me not to be afraid of objection. If you're never afraid of objection, your life gets quality. Quick, quickly your life if you don't fear rejection your life quality goes up very quick squirt better than lube cleaner um, squirts the bomb squirt is everything Lucy Charles on the gas I don't who's I don't know who that is Lucy Charles I don't know who Lucy Charles is best daily running shoe 
uh, Outra Escalante or Nike Next Percent Vaporfly. Harley, how do you make your sugar water? I just put 100 grams per hour in a bottle. So if I'm going for five hours, put in 500 grams. If I'm going for two hours, put in 200 grams. And then fill up the rest of the water and give it a good shake. Top it up when possible. And then have another bottle of clean water just to rinse them out. Um, sugar's fantastic. All right, we've got a question here. F uh, Frederico. We've got a lot of Latino questions here today. Fantastic. Um... Asioma Frederico asks, Asioma Fabro Pedals. Thoughts, i not a fan. I'm not saying it's a bad product, I'm just like, why? Like, when you have a pedal power meter system, what if you hit it? When you crash, that pedal gets whacked hard. You know, like, I'm not a fan of power, power pedals. Pedal base in the power. <laughs> pedal base power, I'm not a fan of, man. I'm not a fan of. I'm a fan of stages. It's protected, it's lightweight, it's cheap, it's proven. You know, I had a friend, I've got a friend, Jason Fonga. Yeah, I think he's using Asiomas. We're going up the doy. And his watts is way out, way out. I was like, dude, when, there's no way we're doing 300 watts. You, you, we're doing more like 250. He uh, says, and I was like, no, I disagree. You know? So, and anyway, I, I, I attacked up the road, surged up the road. So like, this is too easy. And then, uh, Jason stayed at his watts, I think, I can't remember exactly, and then and then he's like, fuck this, I'm going after Harley, and then and the race is on. Yes, I, I don't think they're accurate, in my experience, but maybe that was just a bad day of calibration or whatever, but for me, stages, stages. Bugger wugger, I wish I could send you a picture of my bike. Send me one on Instagram. Send me one on Instagram. Or make a video, here we go, make a video of your bike, and then send send a link in the comment section, and I'll give you, I'll give you my comment, all right? That's what people can do. Harley, just say, hey, Harley, critique my bike. Make a video of it. Just a basic video, one minute, five minute, whatever. And then link it down below. And I'll watch it. I'll see in my comments. I'll see in the comments. Oh, Lucy Charles, Instagram, the world-class triathlete. Okay. Oh, that name rings a bell. There's no drugs in triathlon. Triathletes don't use EPO. They just, they don't. There's no advantage to going faster on the bike or the run or the swim. There's no advantage to increase red blood cell. There's no advantage to any of that. Cortisone, prednisone. Hormones, no, no advantage of stimulants. There's no advantage. So I would say full natty bra. Full natty bra. Current FTP. Um, it's probably about, I don't know, 350 watts. 350, I'd say I could probably do if I had a, had a good good uh, a good reason to do that. 350. Um, do you think using your bike on a smart trainer damages? Yes, it does. Trainers damage frames. They do. They do. Right, they damage frames. Don't use your carbon bike in a trainer, man. Use a, use a heavy-ass alloy bike in your trainer. Otherwise, you just play with fire. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, pedals, you can hit them on the tarmac. Cool Mac saying, yeah, it's just... It's just no, 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 no idea. Opinions on Campag group sets. Um, I've had Campag. Don't like how it feels. Yeah, that's his personal preference. Is, is it good quality stuff? Sure, sure. Tour de France went on Campag recently, so it's good enough. I just don't like how it shifts. Also got some of your Shimano SRAM free hub bodies out there, so Campag's just for me, like, no go. Should I chew the wheels on my bike and get it serviced again? Where there's a wobble in the shop, I bought my bike from, did a bad job servicing it. Learn how to service your own stuff, all right? Like, people, you should never, ever um, be disgruntled with the workmanship at the shop, because you should be doing it, all right? You should be doing it. This is, I mean, people are like, oh, this shop's shit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great, but you should be doing it, you know? I don't grizzle about any shop, because I do it myself. If I don't know how to do it, I'll learn how to do it. You know, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a cycling mate who works at Bicycle Express. His name's Sam, and um, if I've got a problem I don't know how to do, okay, I'll go, you know, when Sam's free, I'll go down there and, and just ha ha haggle him to uh, ask me, show me how to do it, you know. Um, so yeah, you learn how to do things, you know, and build a relationship with your local shop, where you, maybe you help them with promotions or whatever, and they help you, I mean, for the time, and uh, show you how to do something. So you want to learn how to do stuff yourself. You, then you save money, there's no save time, there's no grizzles, and you're good to go. So, and then what will happen is, all your mates will give me your bike to fix. I've got all these bikes, 
at my place now my mates like hey fix my bike blah 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 and i do it i do it for free i fix people's bikes for free um i charge for parts obviously but i fix it for free and uh you know that sort of is a win for me because i've become a better mechanic i've become such a good bike mechanic you know i never ever thought i'd be this good you know there's still definitely way way better mechanics out there than myself but i love working on bikes now especially the older bikes like the um you know tooth that the, if a bike was built in the last you know from 20 to 2015 then they're, they're really easy to work on in general um what spectrum of tension are your spds i'm just getting into it and i'm uncomfortable lower settings just increase it each week just boom 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 i have a on a pretty high tension because i don't like that slop at the top <coughs> what i'm doing like four or five hundred watts <coughs> so i do normal mate it's right in the shop 500 watts so my tension's pretty high my, my spds you know and i'm used to it but um just play with it you know play with it so you can increase the tension every week just one notch okay go from there and then you get, get used to it i have my tension on my pedals so there's no slop when i'm pedaling if there's any like play tighten it up make sure your cleats aren't worn out as well but the SBD cleats the metal ones last a long time the, the time to replace your metal cleats is when you've got a lot of tension in your pedal you've done a little tension thing make sure when you put it put the allen key in there you don't strip it you don't round it out all right make sure it's clean get a little pin cleaned out go balls deep with the little hex key make sure it's in all the way and then click it on and be like half ass and then turn it and you've stripped it and it's like so clean it that little bolt, put it in there, zip it up. And when you've got a lot of tension in your pedals and you still got that play up and down, then it's time to replace your cleats. <laughs> um, got a question from Ali. Ali Amini Filabadi. That's, that's, oh, here we go, the pussycat. Here we go. A little broiler's coming to say good day. Boiler gives a little wave. Got a question from Ali. Can you answer the question, Boiler? Harley, is it better to cycle with stop scraggling broiler is it better to cycle with the glutes as a primary driver over the quads um the glutes you're going to use everything you're going to use your little you're going to use your hamstrings under here you're going to use your glutes up top and you're going to use your little calves so it's, it's, you're always going to have a, bit of, a mix of three a mix of three all right so you're going to use your, your glutes your hammies and your little calves down here you're, you're using a mix of three and what you can do as well is when you're you know, one, one muscle group is fatiguing. You can just change your pedaling style so you more your hamstrings. Then when your hamstrings really fatigue, you can start mashing the pedals, use your quads. And when your quads are fatigued, you start pulling them back on the pedals, use your quad, your hamstrings. And then when that, your hamstrings and your quads are fatigued, get out of the saddle and use your body weight to mash your pedals down. And that's what you'll see. Like guys like Lance Armstrong, you see that. They change their pedaling up. Chris Froome, you know, you, they'll use hamstring and then they'll be like mashing with the quads and then they'll be like out the saddle. So use all use all three. You're gonna use all all three all the time, but then there's times where you can you know, make it more more quad dominant and then more hamstring dominant and then more gravity dominant when you're at the saddle using your arms as well, pulling on the bars, contador style. So yeah, are you a fan of Air Max 90? No, I don't for no cushion at all. You go and get a pair of Nike Next Percent Vaporfly, and you'll never ever wear Nike Air Max 90s ever again. Um, do you still rate, do you still back rate GP Llama and Maven? For sure, well, why wouldn't I? GP Llama, Shane, he uh, puts out a lot of great content on Zwift. He's very uh, academic. Um, that's, that's not me. So if you want to learn Zwift and uh, how to set up a home trainer, Shane, GP Llama, is your man. Cycling Maven, he is great at uh, cinematography, but I think that, also paralyzes him as well because he's so good at making a video and a story he thinks he has to do it every single time and then um you know and this is the stuff i've said to said to mark cycling maven mark ferguson i said to him said like just do simple stuff man like you know, do daily content but he you know, for whatever reason he's not um and so then you know your audience ship goes down and then you produce a, a great vlog and then it's like the expectations to do let's just you know so you, that's the problem I find with perfectionists like that is they can kill their careers back because they're so good 
at cinematography, they think they have to do it all the time. And that's like a lot of time and effort, man, to do this, like... That's why I do my one-take stuff. One take, you know? And that's why I'm, I will always be around. Just because I make it easy for me to put upload content. It's huge. And I think as well, Mark as well, he's a bit carbohydrate-phobic. And I'm like, oh, dude, like... You catch your carbs, you catch your motivation massive when you start feeling depressed and you eat more fat and your weight goes up and you... And you, you, you you're basically letting pressure out of your tyres. You're racing the crit at 20 PSI. No fun. Post more videos of your Merida hardtail. I could do that, Liam. Um, but working on bikes is very frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. I've tried, but I wanted to just give it to the bike shop to fix. Yeah, but that, that's like... Of course it's frustrating. You know, if you don't know what you're doing. But learn what you're doing. You know, and relax. Don't get frustrated. You know, like, it's a teacher. <sighs> Bicycle mechanics is a teacher. It teaches you that frustration doesn't really help you. You know, it doesn't serve you. So minimise your frustrations by relaxing. Um, I used to be so super frustrated. You know, it used to take me an hour to change a cable on an internal routed. You know, I'm just like, What's... and now to change a cable on an internal routed frame, it's going to take me five minutes or so because I know how to do it. You got. Put your little, cut your little cable at the end, slip on the little inner, and then the inner's in the frame, and pull it out, get your new cable, put it in, done deal. It's easy. Jose says, um, I have a giant contend 2020. Shimano Klaus Group said, great bike to start with. Great bike. Um, holy good day. It's pretty cold where I live now. Should I just ride the carbon bike or should I just switch to Zwift? I'll be riding, bro. I'll be riding. I'll be riding, mate. Um, hello from New York, Duran Rider. I wish I saw you when you were here. I'm out of... I'm out of... Oh, here we go. This is a good one. So, this is... Guys had ulcerative colitis because of it. He's out of it because he'd been taking my advice. <sighs> ulcerative colitis, man. That is... No way to live. So, that's great, man. This is, I mean, like... My advice... Works. You know? And it... I... Yeah. It baffles me more people wouldn't take it. Oh, Duran Riders, you know, I don't like Duran Rider, he swears, or my friend doesn't like him because he trashes Maffa, uh, Maffa, Rap, Raffa and Map Kid, or like, it's just banter, man, just relax, just relax. Followed your advice and dropped sodas because of my teeth. Um, yeah, soda is full of acids, all right? So you, if you're drinking soda, you want to actually get water as well because it can help, yeah rinse your teeth sodas got full of acids some of the best thing for your teeth sugar's fine but the, so the acid in the enamel can be not good when was the Frederico when was the last time you used a PED EPO or other I've never used EPO I've never used EPO um, would I use it yeah I would use it but I would have to do some pretty hardcore training to like justify and get the best experience out of it you know so to use EPO I would say You'd have to have a mad training block, you know, where you're like driven into the ground almost on the edge. You're becoming anemic, but you're super skinny, right? Like you're just looking like, you know, someone like Hugh Carthy or Chris Froome when they're at their peak. So you're really skinny and scrawny and looking like a, a Tour de France winner. And then, you know, the EPO would help you. Otherwise, if you're not at that absolute limit, Using EPO is stupid, like, you know, in my opinion. You know. Now I know people who have done it, and it's relatively safe. I shouldn't say it's stupid, I should say it's, um, you know, it's overkill, right? Um, you want to get to your absolute peak natty, and then use it so you can, you know, you, you want to be able to do 400 watts. Oh, here you go, here we go. You wanna, if you can't do 400 watts for the hour, and you're at 70 kilo, there's no point taking EPO, you know? You, what's the point? Like, you want to get to your natty limit first and then go from there. So that's why I've never used EPO because for me it doesn't make sense because I'm not at my natty limit. I don't train that much anymore. So it'd be like, it'd be pointless to shut down my own exogenous EPO production. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's just, it'd be dumb. It'd be dumb for me to do that. Um, now, last time we used performance enhancing drug would be about two hours ago, three hours ago, I used some some Ventolin, some Salbutamol, um, just to open up my breathing. So yeah, so 
about three hours ago, I used performance enhancing drugs in the form of asthma puffer. Huge benefit if uh, I live with cats. You saw the cats just then, even my nose is starting to run now from that cat. So using the asthma drugs, which are banned, it's a banned drug, it's a performance enhancing doping drug. You know, there's no doubt about it, it is doping. Um, so using that doping spray, the it, it gives you makes a huge difference, man. It can it can shave minutes off your time up a climb. Minutes, you know, up a 30 minute climb, it could be the difference between doing it in 30 minutes or 35 minutes. So powerful. So if you have asthma or you can't breathe properly, you have an allergy, using that, it's like it's game changer. It's a game changer. So a few hours ago, I used performance enhancing drugs. Um, do you like potatoes? I love potatoes. Steamed, baked, boiled, mashed. Potatoes for sure. When were you on Hambini team up? We were going to do a, a podcast a while back and then you had some issues with Cycling Weekly or whoever it was and we, we sort of missed it. I think we'll, we'll get it going. I'm, I'm a bit hopeless for these uh, Zoom talks. We'll get it going. Um, we're on the same page with many things, Hambini and myself. Just We just say it how we see it. Hi Harley from Hud from Brisbane. Hudos. Hudo from Brisbane. Hud from Brisbane. Thanks for the all your answers, but why a Shimano SPD XDR? Is it worth spending more money for more expensive pedals? Um, good question. The reason why I use XDR is because they're lighter, you know, than XT or the cheaper ones. That's, so you don't need, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you use whatever X, SPD shoes you're using, pedal you're using, it doesn't really matter. I just like X, XDR because they're lighter. But there's a new pedal I'm going to check out soon from Xpedo. It's about 100 grams lighter than XDR, so I'm going to try those out. Titanium axle. So yeah, it, 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 it there's no advantage really, to be honest, um, in spending extra XDR. But I got them back in the day when they were, they were like 120 bucks and wiggle. You know, I bought a whole stack of them. So I've got like a lifetime supply of XDR pedals. So it's, for me, it's just a no-brainer. They're pretty durable. We can service them. The cleats last a long time. I like them. Mr. Tony, would you ever go to Spain again? For sure, Spain. I like Spain. I had a good time in Spain. Train in Spain, for sure. For sure. Um, bugger wugger. I've learned a lot just by watching your vids the last eight years. I've learned a lot too. Um, I learn a lot from my audience. I learn a lot teaching people. You know, I, I love it. I appreciate the support, man. Can I use indoor tires and outdoor quick release? Too lazy to change tires. Um, TK, I would recommend. You could, you could do that. I would recommend though get two bikes. Just get two bikes. Get your bike for the trainer, and then get a you know, get a bike for business, and then get a bike for party. Right? Your trainer bike, and then you got your road bike. Two bikes, dude. Get two bikes, and then you don't have to faff around with chucking it in the train. Just just get two bikes. Get two bikes. Get a sub seven kilo road bike, and then you have your trainer bike, and then you're good to go. Do you know what I'm eating? Main main noodle chow mein chow mein noodles with pineapple, red pepper, broccoli. Vegan chicken and a good sauce. Sounds good. It sounds tasty. Breaking Babylon. Hit your like button, people. Thank you very much, Fruit Fly. It does help. The likes, the comments, it all helps. Helps other people find this content. So if you want to grow the community, leave a comment, leave a like. I appreciate that. Um, but you win. You win. I started eating more fruits and vegetables. I started riding bikes because of you. Started 2013 when I found you and found my sport. I rode 2018 a Monda LR now. Thanks for everything. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. Food combining. Another tip for digestion is food combining. Just Google up food combining and learn about food combining. Food combining is basically, in a nutshell, if you want to eat, when you eat fruit, you eat fruit alone. First thing of the day. Because if you eat fruit after the rice or whatever else you're eating, just sits in your gut and blah, 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 bubbles up and bloats. So having fruit first makes a huge difference. Um, breaking, we've got testosterone. Breaking, blah, blah, blah. if you have any questions about tests, let us know. Have you done the Yarra Boulevard in Melbourne? Yes, I have. A little bit, but not the full on. The hills are undulating. Any hill, any tips for undulating hills? Keep your cadence about 90. You know, keep your cadence at 90. And get a power meter so you can learn to keep your power consistent on the hill. Um, yeah, power meter and 90 cadence. I bought a new medium giant SCR2, the 2019 model, Shimano Claris group set, Alex aluminum frame. That's a good bike, bro. It's a good bike. Learn how to tune it. 
they're a good decent bike decent bike um what about dr evil uh Isil, yeah well we're all good Isil, um he came to my assistance with the slanderous claims that hannah and michael put up about me he was like hang on as much as i don't really like harley what you're saying about harley is a lie it is slander it is defamation so Isil, thanks for that he uh, he came to my assistance so good on him shows a bit of integrity that he's even he doesn't like me he's like well you know I don't like the highs either, so he, he did a good job there. Um, I have a 32, 34 tooth chain wheel. Yes, it does. It's 34, 30, 34 on the front, 34 on the back. Is it the same as 30, 30? It is. It's 1, 1. It's the same. It's the same. Have you done indoor velodrome? Yes. Um, hang on. Outdoor velodrome, sorry. I haven't done indoor, but no, I haven't. I have never ridden on the track indoors. Outdoors, yes. Indoor, no. I should, because I've got the, a really good one not too far from here. Angus says, how much do you weigh? I'm not sure, Angus. I'm going to say between 70, 72 and 80 kilos at the moment. <sighs> awesome chat. I jumped in late. What do you recommend for beginner cyclists to improve road speed and endurance? Power meter. Get a stages power meter and, you know, a Brighton head unit. I like the Brighton 330, 36-hour battery life. Cheap, works and just learn to pace yourself to power learn to spin at 90 cadence and also if you're looking down at your bright your head unit make sure you're paying attention to the road all right you don't want to run in the back of a car or hit a rock or whatever i right? so always pay attention on the road but that's what you're doing 100 grams of carbs per hour use a power meter pace from game changer drink enough water see so a pee and clear for two or three hours game changer that's what you do that's what you do um <clears throat> Would you rather be fully raw or fully cooked for the rest of your life? I, I would say neither. Neither. I'm going to say raw till four, baby. I love my fruit. I've got to have my fruit. And I like my starches. But let's just say, to answer your hypothetical question, if I had a choice on an island or in an area with the, the world best fruit in the world, at my fingertips anytime I want, then yeah, there's no doubt I'm going to go fully raw versus eating oats for breakfast and feeling heavy as heck. Um... But in today's world, I'm going to say raw to four is the best solution, situation, for sure. Can I eat fruits late at night? You can. You can eat fruit anytime you want. But if you're eating fruit after starches or other foods, it's not going to sit too well. So you might feel a bit, uh, you know. If you want sweet after your savory meal, you didn't eat enough sweet beforehand, okay? So you want to think, do sweet all day until you're like, oh, I don't want any more sweet. And then have your starch meal, your your sweet, your savoury meal. And if after that savoury meal, you know, oh, I could do with some sweet, you still didn't have enough sweet beforehand. Your body needs sucrose every day. Sucrose every meal. If it doesn't get enough sucrose, at the end of the day, it'll be like, I need more sucrose. Okay, so you need sucrose. Breaking Babylon, you rode up Mount Lemon today. I feel amazing today riding up Mount Lennon. Lemon, that's in, that's in Arizona, on my time at Rim. Good work, that's a good one. Um, is Strava doping real? I follow this local, has all the Strava KOMs, has pro data. Could 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 be a, a hitter, maybe not. Could be on an e bike. Um, do you still have that badass black and green TCR? I don't. The seat post eventually cracked because the ISP clamp was cutting into it. Um, giant denied me warranty the first time around, and then the second time I appealed the warranty and they gave it to me because my local bike shop. I bought it from went to bat so but um and that's great the shop helped me out would i buy a giant product ever again um no i wouldn't because i experience do they make great bikes yeah but isp it's just a bad design it's when it works it's fantastic but if you have a problem with it no even that guy um channel peak talk i think it's him he did a tcr he an issue with his tcr the latest tcr issue the seat clamp He's giant. If you're watching, please go back to 27.2. Normal seat clamp. Done. Best light for night riding. Something fuck. Something bright. Something real bright. You know? Something real bright. Advice, opinion on strength training. Um, good, good for bone density. Good for bone density. Stock X has Nike Vaporfly. Nike Vaporfly, 4%. Best shoe ever made. 
no question. For right. Um, on your main channel, what percent are your viewers from in the world? Mostly USA. Mostly USA. Cat party. Hey, Duran. Hey, everyone. I don't have a truing stand to true wheels. Get one. Get one. Or true it in your frame. Is Athlean, is Athlean X still on the juice in your opinion? If he still looks like he's on the juice, in my opinion, he's still on the juice. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get side, get some more water, get some more food. So I'm going to wrap up this live stream. I appreciate all your support. appreciate everyone tuning in. Lionel Sanders, natty or not. Again, pro triathletes don't use pharmaceutical products. There's no advantage to using testosterone for recovery because you're training 30 hours a week. There's no advantage to using EPO, putting up to a race to get your hemoglobin up to 200. There's no advantage to using painkillers in the race when it really hurts. There's no advantage to using stimulants like Ritalin, Adderall, Modafinil, Concerta to keep focus during the race and stimulant abuse is not prevalent in any sport. So I'm going to say long sense is natty. Um, a couple more questions here. Do you ever get bored from the same roots? Oh, no, I don't. Boredom's a state of mind. I love doing the same stuff all the time, racing people. Are you going to get Alpha Flies? I'm not going to get Alpha Flies. I've got a shoe friend who works at Nike. His name is Sam. He is also a shoe geek like myself. I said, Sam, honest opinion, Alpha Fly or Vapor Fly next percent. He's like, dude, Alpha Fly, eh, Vapor Fly, eh, yes, Vapor Fly. So I'm not going to get Alpha Flies. Save money. Get, get a pair of um, Vaporfly 4%. Next percent. Not 4%, sorry. Vaporfly next percent. That you know, carbon plate. The pink ones, the orange ones, the green ones. The Vaporfly 4% gets hard pretty quick. So not the best. Good shoe, but not the best. The best shoe ever made for road. And I've worn so many shoes. Is the Nike next percent Vaporfly comes in green or white or orange or pink or red that's the best all right 400 watts an hour and a half no worries mate full nutty bra full nutty bra all right anyway again thanks for the thanks for the opinions thanks for the questions thanks for the support i'm gonna get some more water cover hydrate and uh get on peace maybe we'll go to my main channel and do a live stream shortly as well